An arc is one of the most basic objects you can create. On the home ribbon, in the draw panel, when I expand the arc tool, you can see that there are 11 methods for creating arcs. With the exception of the continue option, all of these methods require you to specify either three points or two points and a value, such as the radius, chord length, or tangent direction. The default method is to create an arc that passes through three points. When I choose the three point option, the program prompts me for the starting point of the arc and also tells me that the arc will be created in a counterclockwise direction. But note that if you press and hold the control key, you can create an arc in a clockwise direction. I'll click to select the start point and then the second point. As soon as I specify that second point, I can see a preview image of the arc. As I move my cursor, the preview changes so that the arc extends from the start point and through the second point to the position of the cursor. The first two points remain fixed and it's the third point, the end point, that completes the creation of the arc. Once the arc has been created, if I select it, grips appear at specific locations that correspond to the geometry used to store the arc. The program stores the start point, the end point, and the center point of the arc. There's also a grip at the midpoint. I'll go back to the ribbon, and this time I'll create an arc using the start center length method. Once I've created the arc, notice that when I select it, I again see grips at the start point, the end point, and the center point. Regardless of the method you use to create the arc, once it has been created, the program uses the start point, the end point, and the center point to store the definition of the arc. Notice that the start center length method has floated to the top of the split button. If I click that button now, instead of using the default three point method, the program repeats the start center length method. But if I cancel the command and then press the space bar or right click to repeat the command, the program reverts back to the default method, which creates an arc passing through three points. Of course, even if you start the command using the default method, you can easily switch to any of the other methods by choosing options. The available options always display on the command line. If dynamic input is enabled, these options also appear adjacent to the cursor. You can then choose any available option by clicking the option on the command line, by pressing the down arrow on the keyboard, by right-clicking and choosing from a shortcut menu, or by typing the letter corresponding to the desired option. In this case, I'll choose the center option. Now the program is prompting me to select the center point of the arc. Once I click to pick the center point, the prompt changes. Now the program is prompting me to specify the end point of the arc. But notice that at this point, I can also choose the angle or chord length option to complete the arc. I'll choose the angle option. As soon as I do, the program prompts me to specify the included angle. Notice that by default, the arc is extending in a counterclockwise direction. But if I press the control key, the arc extends in a clockwise direction. I can also type an angle value. If I specify a positive angle value, such as 90 degrees, the arc will be drawn in a counterclockwise direction. But if I specify a negative angle value, such as negative 90 degrees, the arc will be drawn in a clockwise direction. 